assess the impact of natural disasters. As they do for every mission, the NRO provided unique artwork for NRO 44. Here's the story behind the art. The background of this artwork is a dark shade of NRO blue to symbolize cross-organization collaboration required for mission success. In the foreground, we see a wolf howling as a warning to its pack as the first point of detection for signs of trouble. The wolf pack represents the nation and the international community leveraging and supporting the steadfast sentry. Lastly, the falling snow represents the purity of the NRO's intentions and the serene calm of peace. This is the 12th flight of the Delta IV Heavy. Let's take a look back at this impressive rocket. With three booster cores generating more than two million total pounds of thrust off the pad, the imposing Delta IV Heavy rocket is the nation's proven heavy lifter. Add in its high-performing Delta cryogenic second stage, and the Heavy delivers the flexibility and agility for the most demanding missions, like NASA's Parker Solar Probe launched in 2018. Launching from both Cape Canaveral and Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, ULA's Delta IV Heavy has an impressive resume. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the NROL 26 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. So, uh, hey guys, welcome back to Rocket Gyan, and I'm uh, really sorry and, and, uh, for this thing to happen. I mean, I had uh, some problem with my internet issues, but I quickly resolved it and now i am again here so uh, hopefully i won't be able to give you that uh, pre-stream coverage right now because the stream has already started but uh, yeah i would like to give you just a, a quick update of this uh, whatever is happening right now they had the problem with the swing arm system again and there have been problems with this thing uh, the swing arm uh, thing for so 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 much time but now uh also they had some problem but they are currently going in for the launch that's what the official said but uh, i don't know there could be chances of scrubs because of that and uh, talking about the rocket this rocket is a uh, if we take stages also the boosters also as stages then it is a three stage rocket otherwise it's a two stage rocket the, the first stage is powered by the RS-68A engine, uh, those boosters as well as the core stage. And uh, during the ignition sequence, there is a beautiful fireball buildup which you will be able to see. And uh, the and then the second stage also has the uh, runs on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as its fuel, uh, as well as for the boosters as and the first stage. They also they also run at the same uh, configuration of the fuel. Yeah, I uh, I made a video about the Delta IV Heavy uh, within some time ago because in August 29 there was the first scrub of this space uh, Delta IV Heavy, this mission, and there have been so many scrubs till then. Okay and uh, uh, if i talk about scrubs whatever has happened till then let me just tell you that uh, on august 27 there was a scrub because of the pneumatic issue on august 29 there was an automated hot fire abort because the launcher sequence uh, de uh, detected a problem with the pressure regulator okay rlm 918 rlm lc t minus eight minutes Disable line item 918. Sam This all Sam. Place the SRM ignition to enable. SRM ignition enable to enable. GE verify tissue status ready. Roger, tissue status ready. SYS established best source selector locked on RF and range sources. Roger. Initiate orbital parameter calculations on primary CCLS. Roger. And SYS, did you get your primary balloon cycle task complete? Yes, I reported that complete. Roger. Okay. LC. 
okay so just uh, update here that they have resolved the issue with the swing arm system again and uh, so there is nothing any problem looking like for the today's launch and uh, here we have the mission profile i think so no that's not the mission profile okay so right now they are aiming for the the scheduled lift off time and uh, you can say see the uh, thing with my uh, countdown and their countdown they we have a pro not a problem but we have some uh, difference and that's uh, totally fine because they have a uh, hold plan at t minus four minutes of around 5, uh, 12 to 10 minutes hold and uh, that's a planned hold not to worry about that's why there is a um, difference in the countdown so yeah so guys if you have any questions i know there this was today was a bit weird i mean uh, i wasn't able to do the streaming properly because of the internet issue but i have resolved it quickly and now i am here hi soviet army hi louis smith hi lab rat in all okay. 59 thor irbms were launched with the last flight occurring in 1975 this is the history of Thor began the transition UAL. from missile to space launch vehicle in 1958. On October 11, 1958, America's newly formed space agency marked its inaugural launch when Thor Able boosted NASA's Pioneer One on a mission to the moon, and NASA's long partnership with Thor was born. NASA and the Douglas Aircraft Company began development of the fourth and longest lasting Thor configuration in April 1959. Using a Thor first stage and a Vanguard second and third stage, Delta I lifted off on May 13, 1960 from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 17. Though its first launch was not successful, the Delta team quickly pinpointed the failure and three months later delivered NASA's Echo-1 communication satellite to orbit. Following Echo-1, the Delta team racked up an impressive 22 successful launches. Led by Bill Schindler, the Delta rocket earned its industry workhorse moniker for rapidly establishing itself as one of the most reliable and versatile launchers. During the 1960s, Delta launch vehicles paved the way for the burgeoning communications industry, launched America's first weather satellites, and sent probes to explore our universe. AT&T's Telstar-1, the first commercial communication satellite, launched in 1962 and in 1963 syncom2 became the world's first geosynchronous satellite tyros or television infrared observation satellites provided the national weather service with humans first view of the earth's cloud cover in orbit around the earth moon and sun nasa's explorer satellites provided us with a deeper understanding of the solar wind cosmic rays as well as earth's magnetic field and radiation belts by the end of the decade, launch vehicle modifications, including the addition of solid rocket motors and an upgraded third stage, made it possible for Delta to orbit satellites 10 times larger. The 1970s was an international decade for Delta, as the manifest included scientific and communication satellites for several countries across North America, Europe, and Asia. Perhaps the most demanding challenge of the 1970s was the launch of the Earth Imaging Earth Resources Technology Satellite, later known as Landsat. The mission for the Earth Sciences community required major changes to the Delta propulsion and guidance systems. During the 1980s, Delta continued its reliable service to the communications, weather, and Earth imaging communities. As capable as the Delta rocket proved to be, Production came to a halt in the early 80s when national space policy dictated that the space shuttle be used as the U.S.'s primary launcher, signaling the end of the expendable launch vehicle. But in 1987, the Delta team picked up where they left off and development began on a launch vehicle to support the Air Force's global positioning system. On February 14, 1989, Delta 184 began a new chapter in space launch history as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 17, demonstrating an incredible feat. The Delta II had gone from development to launch in just two years. To accommodate the larger GPS satellites, engineers improved the Delta rocket in several ways. The fuel tanks were stretched, a new payload fairing was developed, and larger solid rocket motors were incorporated. 
The modifications resulted in increased performance and flexibility. By the mid-1990s, the Delta II had delivered the fully operational 24-satellite GPS constellation. And though it was developed for the Air Force, Delta again became a reliable partner to both NASA and its commercial customers. Over the course of its more than 20-year run, the Delta II has launched some of America's best-known scientific and exploration missions. Plus four, three, two, we have main engine start, zero, and liftoff of the Stardust spacecraft. This is pretty liftoff. cool, actually. These uh, uh, history of the ULA. ULA is like uh, people does not seem to have interest in this company, ULA, but I must say that this company has achieved so 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 many feats now uh, if you just pick up their uh, milestones and feats uh, book then you will just keep on reading it and it won't end so yeah but the only thing is was the spacex has come and uh, it has actually changed everything uh, in the space industry in the rocket industry mainly and because of its reusability, people are like, why aren't they reusing the things uh, in other companies also? And uh, people don't like that because obviously this the law cost per launch for the Delta IV Heavy is three hundred and fifty million dollars. Can you just imagine that? And they will all the three hundred fifty million dollars will all be going into the ocean once it the mission is completed so yeah that's why reusability is the key and spacex has done that and that's why uh, it is uh, so highly rated but ula is not behind uh, with its vulcan rocket they are planning to reuse uh, initially they won't but they have the plans to reuse somewhat especially the second stage and that would be the orbital uh, uh, the second stage of the Vulcan from the orbit to the land that will be a very good feat if they achieve Vandenberg Air Force Base in California Range safety arm light on Range ready Water system ready From its early beginnings as a weapon and deterrent through its transformation into a space launch vehicle Delta has reliably supported our nation for more than 60 years. Delta's legacy as a workhorse continues today and is a testament to the persistence, dedication, and commitment of an enterprising team that has continually evolved the Delta rocket to support a changing world. Five, four, and the epic three, fireball. Two, How can not be one? How can and we forget this thing? Lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket. Wow. Loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. ATD. Loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. So we are T minus eight minutes and counting, and uh, it's looking like everything is uh, looking right now so good, and uh, we can. But launch on time verified. Roger. LC switch to the ready position. All steps are complete prior to the status check. Wow, see the views. I mean, I was saying, uh, but only thing is uh, uh, a frost on the rockets for today's launch is a bit more uh, compared to the previous ones. I don't know why, but yeah, that's the thing. This is Delta Mission Control. We have entered the planned 10 minute built in hold and preparations for launch continue. In a few moments, launch conductor Scott Barney will pull the launch team for the final go to pick up the count. 27 engineers and managers are pulled for system status and readiness to proceed. This is the final status check before launch for all Delta vehicle systems, ground systems, the spacecraft, and the U.S. Space Force Eastern Range. The vehicle system readiness poll includes electrical systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, propulsion systems, flight control, and propellants. Let's listen in as Scott Barney performs the final polling of the launch team. And this will be so cool to hear. This thing when they uh, conduct this poll. Let's hope we have, uh, get a good uh, poll here and everything. And uh, we actually get this thing. This beauty, Delta IV Heavy, such a big hel heavy rocket to fly. We are just waiting for the polling to begin now. And that polling is very satisfying 
satisfying to hear just listen in to that polling once it starts although the spacex has uh, uh, uh advanced okay status check to proceed with terminal count first stage systems propulsion go hydraulics go box go lh2 go second stage system locks go lh2 go electrical systems airborne Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Com. Go. GCQ. Go. Operation support. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Umbilicals. Go. Ask gas. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly Chief. Go. Range Coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch Director. Launch vehicles ready to launch. Oh, Mission. minus six minutes. Mission Director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. MEQ establish swing arm, lock pins pulled. Active. Wow. Guys. Polling is complete and the launch team has given the go for launch. The countdown will resume approximately two minutes from now, but before it does, let's walk through the final checks we'll hear from the launch team. At T-minus four minutes, and counting, the team will enter the terminal count and begin securing the second stage liquid oxygen tank. At T-minus three minutes, 32 seconds, booster liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen tank securing is started, which includes closing the propellant fill and drain valves. Also at T-minus three minutes, 32 seconds, vehicle transfer from ground facility power to its own internal battery power will be complete. At T-minus three minutes, the vehicle ordnance system is armed and booster liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellant tanks are verified to be at flight pressure and flight level. Two minutes prior to liftoff, the team will verify that the hydraulic system is pressurized, as well as confirm booster, second stage, and flight termination system battery voltages. At T-minus 120, the team will begin securing the second stage liquid hydrogen tank. At T-minus 60 seconds, the eastern range readiness is verified. At T-minus 50 seconds, the second stage liquid hydrogen tank is secured at flight level. A final launch vehicle and spacecraft status check is conducted at T-minus 30 seconds. At T minus 15 seconds, the ROFIs, or sparklers, are ignited to burn off excess hydrogen at the base of the vehicle. At T minus 7 seconds, the starboard engine ignites, followed by the core and port engines. Liftoff will occur at T zero. After liftoff, you'll hear the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle ascent data. Exactly. So we are guys go for launch and uh, everything is looking right now very good. Uh, the vehicle is uh, right now just topping off all the at T-minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate releasing the hold in just a few moments. All the topping off is being done of all the fuels which is there, the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. That's why this uh, white fumes comes out of the rocket. T-minus four minutes and counting. The countdown clock has resumed. We've entered the terminal count and are go for launch at 8.09 p.m. Eastern. Ground pyros enabled. okay so we are right now the t minus three minutes and 42 seconds everything is looking good uh and hopefully we can see this thing fly after so 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 much time i mean uh, we had uh, the first uh, scheduled lift off in 325 august 29 second stage lock secure at flight level second stage locks is secured now now no more uh, liquid oxygen will be pumped onto the second stage uh, 307 hi soviet army uh, no 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 it's not cancelled uh, ksp2 is not cancelled still in the development and uh, the only the timeline has been changed it will now be released in 2022 t minus two minutes 49 seconds FTS internal. Ah, Louis Smith. Thanks for that information. Maybe there is a launch in 2024 from Indonesia. Yeah, T minus two minutes and 36 seconds. TBC locks at flight pressure and flight level. Guys, now just wait for that fireball to happen. I have made the video about this ignition sequence and delta 4 heavy itself so you can have a look at it afterwards the link is down in the description and 
CBC LH2 at flight pressure and flight and level. Now you will just witness the fireball which will create be just before the liftoff, and that fireball is the result T minus of two the hydrogen gas catching Evil fire. Internal. Hydraulic pressure at 155. Launch sequence or start. It's finally happening, guys. T minus one minutes and 46 seconds now. 140. FCS. Right. 137. Now it should not be any scrub, please. We have waited for this for so, so, so long. T minus 90 seconds. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. Everything is go for launch. 120. FCS count started. OCU's arms. We are T minus one minute now. Wow. T minus one minute. Engine start box go. Rock, report range status. Range green. Range is green. We are actually proceeding seconds. towards the launch now. Guys, at T minus 15 seconds, the ROFIs will be ignited. The radially outward firing initiators, those sparklers beneath the rockets, that is responsible to uh, flame up all the hydrogen gas which comes out of the rocket engine. 30 seconds. Status check. Go Delta. Go NROL. We are go for the launch T minus 20 seconds now. Trophy shouldn't be ignited now in T minus 15. 15 seconds. Trophies. Yeah. Trophy ignition. Trophies have been. T minus 9. 10. 9. 8. 8 7. Fireball. 6. 5. Engine ignition. 3. 2. 1. And zero lift and liftoff. Liftoff. The United Launch Alliance finally. Delta IV heavy rocket carrying the NRL 44 mission for the National wow. Reconnaissance Office. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle asset data. 25 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good, body rate responses look good. Always the end up with the VVP today. The, uh, the fireball was not that spectacular because they we weren't we we didn't see it. Guns throttling down as expected. The partial thrust level engine response looks good. But now the, it is uh, fully Before nominal and proceeding level. towards the lift off. Yeah, 50 seconds into flight. Engine operating parameters continue to look good on all three engines. Wow. Such a spectacular launch. Passing one minute into flight. Delta IV is now 4.3 miles in altitude, 5.8 miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,200 miles per hour. Now the next event coming up will be the right now it's passing through Max Q, and uh, and at one minute 20 seconds into flight, vehicle is now passing through yeah. Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is also passing Mach 1. Delta IV is now supersonic. Now. Engine operating parameters continue to look good on all three boosters, port and starboard booster in the full thrust mode, core booster in the partial thrust mode. Wow, see this beauty, man. Body rates continue to look stable throughout the boost phase of flight. And now the next event will be... Three quality is look good throughout uh, the, the jettisoning phase. of the boosters. Now passing one minute, 46 seconds into flight. Just, wow. I mean, did you see those contrails which happened and the second stage reaction control system is pressurizing the flight levels. System response looks good. Yes, Liz Smith. Engine operating parameters on all three engines continue to look good. Everything is looking nominal right now. Body rates continue to look stable. Vehicle has now gone to closed loop guidance. Now the jettisoning should happen. Seeing some correction in uh, the attitude as expected when vehicle switches over to closed loop guidance. So the mission control is good, doing a pretty good job. Now two minutes, 37 seconds into flight, approximately three minutes remaining in boost phase of flight. 
and the Delta IV rocket now weighs just one half of what it did at liftoff, burning propellant at a rate of almost 5,000 pounds per wow. second. Wow. Body rates in roll pitch and yaw have nulled out nicely now after the closed loop guidance switchover. And vehicle is now passing Mach 5. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. Port and starboard boosters in the full thrust mode, core booster in the partial thrust Fan, mode. we want the onboard camera view. Can we get that? Please. Maybe we will get that during the uh, jettisoning of the boosters. Vehicle body rates have damped out nicely now as the vehicle is continuing in the latter part of Here the Here we boost have phase. the onboard camera view. Approximately 30 seconds now remaining until port and starboard booster engines cut off. And... And approximately two minutes now remaining in the boost phase of flight. Boosted. And standing by for strap-on engines to throttle down. Okay. And strap-on engines have begun throttling down in preparation for engine cutoff. We can see that. And port and starboard booster and here we off. have the separation guys wow and see we've those seen good indication of separation <laughs> wow. of the port and starboard boosters core booster is throttled back up to full thrust as expected uh, engine response looks good exactly now four minutes 20 seconds into flight. actually the thing is uh, uh, they don't have uh, the, the at the time of the launch we had night, right? And the That's upper why this happened. The oxygen system has begun boost phase chill down sequence to begin thermal conditioning of the RL10 engine. Wow. And approximately one minute now remaining until Pico. But they can do something like SpaceX does uh, have lighting on the rocket itself. And upper stage fuel system. Flash or something like that. And the plume has now expanded as uh, expected. And core engine continuing to look good in the full thrust mode. Engine operating parameters look nominal. Wow. Now passing five minutes into flight. So guys, uh, now the boost, see, do you know that? And the Delta IV is now 71 miles in altitude, 360 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,900 miles per hour. Exactly. Uh, so I was telling that uh, uh, for this booster separation and jettisoning, do yeah, you know that they, it does not actually uh, saves the fuel by uh, transferring the fuel from the boosters to the center core? It does not happen like that. On the yeah, booster, down okay. In for Bico, standing by for Bico. The main engine actually burns for a lot. And we have Pico booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage separation. Okay, so there is some problem with the in, I mean, animation. And we have good indication of separation of the first and second stages. Separation now confirmed. The, on the RL-10 is deploying. Exposing the engine spell now, which will be extended. Which has extended. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Chamber pressure on the RL-10 looks good. Body rate responses look good on the DCSS. Okay, ignition. Maybe, okay, the video feed was cut. Now passing six minutes, 15 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good on the RL-10. Yes, uh, I mean three more are, are left. Uh, upper for stage this has thing. begun initial thruster firings to, being, to begin catalyst bed warming. Seeing a couple of periodic dropouts in telemetry. And we have seen good indication of payload fairing jettison. Okay, that's a good thing. I mean, they are getting some problem with the telemetry, but the vehicle is performing nominally. That's what we want. And yes, this is a very good rocket, good looking rocket, as well as the ignition is also very spectacular to watch. And then, uh, yeah, I was saying about the fuel. If the fuel is not transferred from the uh, boosters to the center core. How it saves fuel is by throttling down the center core. It, the engine does not go to the full thrust in that, but the other boosters does go to the full thrust. And that's the reason why it uh, the center core burns for a little longer. Although the most efficient. As you just heard with that call for payload fairing jettison, that will wrap up this evening's live coverage of the broadcast. ULA's Delta IV Heavy made history this year when it became the first operational rocket to host 3D projection mapping. Let's take a look at the footage from this unique event. Yeah. I'm Tori Bruno. 
president and CEO of United Launch This Alliance. was a pretty good thing they, they did. The first ever 3D animated projection on an operational rocket. And of course, we have chosen the majestic Delta IV space launch vehicle for this experience. So enjoy the show and God bless America. We are dreamers, inspired by possibilities not yet imagined. Believers driven to Just harness the potential of space. Guys. Leaders combining expertise and ingenuity. And it all started with a spark of the imagination. It's a 3D projection. On the actual yes. rocket. ECSC. Go. Timer. Go. ECS. Go. QE. Go. USO. Go. OSM. Go. BSE. BSE is go. ALC. Go. AC. Wow. AC is go. I mean, RC. Wow. Clear to proceed. Launch direct. The fueling is the going on. Is ready to launch. This was projected on the actual rocket, guys. The, this 3D projection was done. And uh, they didn't get the hype which they deserved for this thing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. How much the team would have planned five, to do this, but. 4, main engine ignition. 2, 1, and liftoff. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta Heavy Rocket. Although ULA's focus is on the future, we will always celebrate our incredible legacy. 140 missions, 140 successes, enabling our customers to save lives, explore the universe, and connect the world. From John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth, To new ways of connecting the world. From the most accurate weather satellites ever deployed. Mandatory evacuation for Central Florida. To game-changing national security satellites. launching missions throughout the solar system and beyond. To once again, sending astronauts to space from U.S. soil. The commercial crew program and this will be launched in March 2021. The Boeing is launching its uh, GST Starliner guys. They have a date now, March 29, 2021. And doubling down on our commitment to our country. America has always and will always be at the forefront of space. This mission is no That's a uh, uh, Matt. Actually, As this is a PR campaign they did, and it's completely fine to do these kind of things. To protect. Way of life. They have a budget for PR campaign, every agency has, so yeah. The National Reconnaissance Office. When our country needs eyes and ears from the high ground of space, to give advanced warning to threats. See this man. Wow. in the aftermath of natural disasters this thing was so 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 perfectly designed and made I mean wow to 
answer our most pressing intelligence questions. It turns to the National Reconnaissance Office. The leader in National Space Intelligence Systems. Over the next decade, the ULA will continue to protect life on Earth with the introduction of the Vulcan Centaur. Our next generation rocket, a rocket purpose built for national security. Founded on the Atlas and Delta legacy of success. With Vulcan Centaur, we are engineering limitless possibilities for a safer, more secure existence at home and in space. We are dreamers inspired by possibilities not yet imagined. Believers driven to broaden horizons, we deliver progress above. Wow. Well, 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 it was such a spectacular thing they did. This is Delta Mission Control at T plus 14 minutes, 40 seconds. I hope you enjoyed the shows, the 3D video projection, and the successful liftoff of the Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the Interrail 44 mission. Liftoff occurred Hi. at 8.09 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Time. At our customer's request, we'll now terminate our live coverage. I'd like to thank Patrick Moore for his participation in this evening's broadcast. For more information, follow us on Facebook or Twitter or our blog at ULALaunch.com. We'll leave you now with another look at the liftoff of the Delta IV Heavy rocket this evening. I'm Dylan Rice, and on behalf of the entire launch team, thank you for joining us, and have a great evening. Eight, seven, six, five, main engine ignition, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket carrying the NRL 44 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Just enjoy it first. This was such a spectacular launch. All three R68A engines look good in the full thrust mode. Now 15 seconds into flight, vehicles begun to pitch over maneuver. Body rate responses look good. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle ascent data. 25 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good. Body rate responses look good. Now 30 seconds in. Standing by for core booster throttle down momentarily. And here we go. Okay. <sighs> Man, this was such a good thing they did. Wow. I mean, uh, finally, finally, and finally, this thing, the Delta for Heavy, which was uh, being scrubbed for so 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 many reasons finally launched and uh, hopefully it is successful also although they had some issues with the swing arm system first and then they quickly resolved it and then the telemetry was not uh, up to the mark but the vehicle was performing nominally so yeah that's what we want and uh, uh, hi matt uh, soviet army um, says i want to watch so you spacecraft using the escape tower I mean, <laughs> we don't want anything, any situation uh, in which uh, the escape tower is used. We don't want that. But yeah, uh, we that escape tower is already already there and uh, is there to save the crew, which is on the Soyuz, if uh, there is a problem in the rocket. Military satellite, so we don't get to see anything else. It's a military satellite as well as it's a spy satellite because it's an Earth observation satellite going to a geostationary orbit. And although at geostationary orbit, most of the imaging satellites are not that successful, but yeah, they have uh, too much success uh, with their radar system and the 
जियो स्टेशनरी ऑर्बिट सो या दैट्स अ स्पाई सेटेलाइट एंड इट कैन बी यूज टू स्पाई ऑन एनी कंट्री दे वॉन्ट आई थिंक सो दैट्स वॉट इट इज आई मीन देर दे हैव नॉट रिलीज एनीथिंग एंड इट्स गोइंग टू अ जियो स्टेशनरी ऑर्बिट दैट्स वॉट वी नो एनीथिंग एल्स वी डोंट नो एंड दैट्स वाई दे जस्ट कट द कवरेज MS10 had a problem. Yes, I know. I I saw that thing, and the uh, problem was like that. One of the booster hit the main rocket core booster, and although the escape tower at that time uh, was uh, jettisoned, but the shroud was there, and that shroud protected the crew. So yeah, the see this is the thing. the escape tower the shroud and everything is there to protect the crew but the thing is they are there for a short period of time i mean they and are jettisoned after uh, some time in the flight uh, but that is not the case with the dragon capsule the crew dragon of the spacex the abort system is always and always attached to the capsule and that's why at any point of time if they feel like uh, they can just abort it mean maybe they can also abort it when the second stage is firing or if there is an issue with the second stage then also they can abort it because uh, abort system can fire up although the thing is there will be quickly need uh, the the team actually quickly will be needing to do whatever they can with the dragon spacecraft to either reach the orbit or re-enter the atmosphere so yeah that's the thing so yeah that was pretty much about it and uh, uh, we had a uh, all those initially we had a problem with the swing arm that was resolved and then we had a spectacular lift off from the uh, launch pad although the video feed which was provided was not that good uh, it could have been much greater because it was like cut and the fireball was not witnessed properly but otherwise then also this uh, beautiful lift off was so 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 spectacular and uh, everything was everything was nominal after that and hopefully the mission is successful today okay so thank you so much for tuning in tomorrow we have uh, another lift off uh, not another lift off yeah another lift off of the falcon 9 rocket and uh, that's uh, not a starling mission not tomorrow yeah tomorrow only that's not a starling mission but uh, sx m7 mission which is a large high power broadcasting satellite for serious xs xm stagial digital audio radio service or dars as they say uh, thanks for the thanks for i want to thank my mods to monitor the chat thank you so much for that and yeah until then this is pian shiroila you just saw rocket kyan stay safe stay healthy and